Hi everyone and welcome back to this tutorial series where I will be showing you how to make an action RPG in Godot 4. In this episode we'll finally be animating our player. Also please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel if you want more content like this. But before we get started I'm just gonna upgrade to the newest version of Godot 4. At the time of this recording it's beta 14. I'll of course leave a link in the description to where you can download this. Please remember to use some kind of version control and commit your news changes before you open your project in a new version of Godot. I use Bitbucket to host most of my projects, but you can also use something else like GitHub, which seems to be really popular. Or at the very least, you should make a copy of your project folder, so it will be easy for you to go back to the last working version of your project if something goes wrong when you open it in a new version of Godot. And now we're ready to open our project in the new version of Godot. The first thing I will do is then to run the project and make sure that everything still works as expected. And it does, so let's get started with animation. We are currently using a Sprite2D to visualize our player. And we will be using this together with an animation player for our animations later on. But for simple animations, we could also use an animated Sprite2D instead. I will leave a link in the description to where you can read more on this. But please also feel free to leave a comment if you would like a separate tutorial on how to use the animated Sprite2D for animations. Okay, so we will be using an animation player to animate our player. The animation player can be used for a lot of different types of animations but we'll talk more about this in other episodes. For now, we just want to animate our player's movements. And now let's add an animation player node to our player scene. To create our first animation, we click the animation button and then new. Let's make the walk down animation first. We then start by changing the snap to 0.2. This will be the default time between frames unless we change it later on. Now it is time to create the frames for our animation. Select the sprite node 2D and take a look at the inspector menu to the right. All these keys shows us what properties we can use for our frame. But for now we just want to use the frames from our sprite sheet. So we go down to animation and then frame coordinates. And we make sure that both X and Y is set to zero. And now our sprite should be showing the first frame in the walk down animation. To add this frame using the frame coordinates, we then click the key next to the coordinates and create a new track for them. We then change the frame coordinates again to get the next sprite frame. X should be 0 and Y should be 1. And then we click the key again to add this as the next frame in our animation. We then continue this process until we've added all four walk down frames to our animation. We also need to specify how long our animation is. Since we have 4 frames that each should be shown for 0.2 seconds, we set the animation length to 0.8 here to the right. We also want the animation to loop, so we click the animation looping icon next to the animation length property. To test our animation, we then just press play to the left in the animation menu. And now we've set up the very first animation for our player. Ok, so now we want to create the walk up animation. It's very similar to the animation we just set up, so instead of creating a new animation, we just duplicate the last one. We can then click on each individual frame to change it, but instead of going back to the Sprite2D node for this, we can just edit the frame directly in the inspector menu. The value here is the frame coordinates we added when we created the first animation. For each frame, I now set X to 1. The frame will not change what is shown in the scene view at first, but we can see the changes in the animation menu and when we play the animation. I then set up the left and right walk animations in the same way, by duplicating and changing the X coordinate from the inspector menu. We are now finished setting up animations for the four walk directions. So now it's time to update what animations should be playing based on the player's velocity. We can do this by adding new code to our player script. First, we add a reference to the player's animation player. 
In the description for this video, I have left a link to the GDScript reference in the Godoc documentation. Here you can read about the onReady annotation and the dollar sign literal if you like. Next, we then create a new function to update the animation. I start by creating a string to store the player's direction in, and I set it to down. If the velocity in the x direction is negative, then the player is moving left, and if the x direction is positive, the player is moving right. If the velocity is zero in the x direction and negative in the y direction, then the player is moving up. If neither of these if checks are true, then our direction variable is unchanged and therefore still set to down. To start the correct animation, we then call the play function on the animation player. This function takes a string input specifying the name of the animation that should be played. And finally, we call our new function from the physics process function. Now we run our game again, and we can see that the animation is changing when the direction the player is moving in is changing. But when the player stops moving, there is still an animation playing. To fix this, we add a new if statement to the top of the update animation function we just created. If the length of the velocity vector is zero, then the player has stopped moving, and we stop the animation player. The code we wrote before is then put into the scope of an else statement. It's really important that every line is indented correctly. You can also indent multiple lines at a time by marking all the lines, right-clicking and choosing indent. And that's it! Now we're done making our very first animation for our game. The animation is changing based on the direction the player is moving, and the animation stops when the player stops moving. And that's all for now. In the next episode we will be adding a tile map to our game. Please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel if you want more content like this. Bye!